Recently, I did a video comparing Streamlabs OBS to standard OBS, and you guys absolutely loved it. And so since I've recently done a showcase of OBS live stream elements version of OBS, or at very least their plugin for OBS, I thought that it'd be a great idea to compare that to Streamlabs OBS, since they're fairly similar in the features they offer, but go about things in a very different way. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Azrock. Their new line of Z390 motherboards include their premium Phantom Gaming X board featuring, of course, a whole load of RGB, triple M.2 slots, and great overclocking support too. There's also their Steel Legend board, which provides a great value and still support to any CPU, all the way up to the i9-9900K. You can check more about them in the links in the description down below, and thank you to Azrock for sponsoring this video. So let's run you through the differences, the similarities, and a few thoughts on each of the different platforms. Now, the first thing I want to mention is the OBS Live Stream Elements version is actually just a plugin for OBS, and almost everything is actually done on their website and hosted on their website, rather than doing a lot of stuff locally. This is in contrast to Streamlabs version or Streamlabs OBS, which is a fully separate version, standalone version of OBS, although this isn't actually as much of a problem as you'd think, as as soon as you set up Streamlabs OBS, it automatically imports all of your scenes, your settings, and basically everything from your standard OBS installation into the new one. While you will likely still have to check and make sure all of your settings and your scenes are all good before you actually start streaming, it's a pretty simple setup and I really didn't have any problems when I switched, so you shouldn't have too many problems yourself. Right, so now you understand that, let's take a look at overlays, which is one of the main things that these platforms offer in terms of features. Starting off with the stream elements and OBS Live side of things, as I mentioned, this is all done on their website and all hosted on their website, so set up, as long as you already have an overlay, well, set up on their website, is really simple to get it into OBS. You just add a browser source and paste the link that they give you in, and that is it, it's done. Now actually creating an overlay on their site is fairly simple, you just drag stuff in or add stuff from the sort of toolbar type thing. There are actually a lot of options here for stuff like alert boxes, Twitch chats and a lot of other stuff too. Um, the main problem with this is that if you want to adjust anything midstream, you actually have to go to their website and then you have basically have to guess where you want to move stuff to, rather than in Streamlabs OBS where everything is in OBS and you can just move stuff around. Now actually on the Streamlabs OBS side of things, as I said, it's all run locally, which means that you do generally have a bit higher CPU usage when streaming, but it's generally not a big problem and you do get the benefit of being able to very easily and actually quite intuitively arrange everything how you want. If you want to say move your webcam because it's in the way of something in a new game that you don't have a scene set up for yet, then all you do is you just grab your webcam frame and your webcam and drag it around and that's it. Whereas in Stream Elements and OBS Live, you would have to move the frame on their website and then hope you know where that is and it's in the right place and then come back to OBS and then move your webcam to fit in that. So it's a bit more of a pain. Now with that said, both platforms actually have pre-made templates that you can use and modify and you can also have animated templates on both sides which is awesome to see too. Alright, so enough about overlays, let's talk about chatbots. Now both platforms do have chatbots and I'm going to spare you some details because they both do very similar things, although it does seem like anything the Stream Elements bot can do, the Stream Labs bot can do with more options and sometimes even a little bit better. Now generally speaking you're looking at the usual stuff like mod access and mod mod tools as well as also a load of modules you can install for even stuff like chat interaction and gambling if you like. Both also have a loyalty program although the Streamlabs loyalty program is a little bit more detailed, has a few more options and a few more sort of things that you can do with it. You can still run giveaways and contests and stuff like that so there are a lot of options on both, it just seems like the Streamlabs one has a few more options and details available. On the donations front, both let you do donations through their sites, both give you a a link that your viewers can go to that takes them to a page where they can generally use PayPal but Streamlabs does have a couple of different options um, and neither take a cut from those donations. Both let you have custom messages and some even let you have custom images and GIFs and stuff like that for your viewers to use when they stream and uh, both let you have or let your viewers give you a message to display on screen or even sometimes text to speech if you allow it. 
um, from when they donate. And finally, I want to cover a few extra features that the platforms have that don't necessarily line up with other features that the other platform has. So starting off with Stream Elements and OBS Live, they actually have a music or media request feature. This is quite cool because it allows you to have a pre-made sort of made list of YouTube videos that you can either watch and have displayed on stream or hide but play in the background, so say like background music. Um, those are links of YouTube videos. It only supports YouTube videos and not say local media files or Spotify or anything like that. You'd have to do that manually, but the media request feature is quite cool because it lets your viewers request YouTube videos through your chats and adds that to your list. You can set a lot of predefined you know, kind of terms, so only five minute videos maximum, no like 10 hours of yodeling um, and stuff like that. So that is quite a cool feature to have. On the Streamlab side of things, it doesn't technically have that feature built in, but it does have an app store which has a music app that actually has that feature built in. But the app store, uh, most of the apps that are on there cost some amount of money per month. Generally speaking, you're looking at between one and five dollars per month. And there's actually quite a variety of apps on there. Not only, you know, music tools, but also stuff like overlay creators, even stuff like Apex and Fortnite game stats that you can have displayed on screen and stuff like that as well. So a lot of very cool options and very cool to see that available too. So conclusion time then. Now I'm going to give you a heads up and say that I personally use Streamlabs OBS and the reason that I do that is because it's way, way more intuitive and just generally simpler for me to use. While I appreciate the detail that you can get, especially in the overlay side of things with Stream Elements and the simplicity in terms of installation, the ease of being able to just move my camera around, move the Twitch chat, change settings for your alert boxes if you want, say, text-to-speech to work or not, um, all of that sort of stuff is way easier to do in Stream Labs. Just being able to physically grab stuff and move it around or add new things to your overlay or whatever else. It's all in OBS and it's much more intuitive and simpler for me to use and so that's what I prefer and I really couldn't see myself using Stream Elements mostly just because of that separation and having you know having to go to a separate website and then guessing where stuff in the overlay needs to be. Um, also I'd mentioned that at least from what I've seen anyway um, Stream Labs lets you see both YouTube and Twitch chat on screen as well at the same time in the same box which is very nice and very handy to have because I streamed to both platforms and I'm not sure that you can do that in stream elements although feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Now with that said both of these platforms are completely free for you to use so I've left links to both of them in the description and I highly recommend you try both of them out and just see which one works for you but for me personally I would recommend stream labs. I would love to hear your thoughts though in the comments down below and if you regularly use these and there's any features that I missed or maybe there's something that I didn't quite understand here then definitely let me know in the comments down below as I would love to hear from you. Now as always if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis with live streams on Thursday nights, then first of all make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon to be well notified of new videos. You can also check out a load of other videos over there and there's a load of links in the description down below. There's Amazon Overclock UK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them. There's also Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad free videos and support the channel too. Or you can check out merch, hoodies and t-shirts a load of Tech Team GB or non Tech Team GB related designs, and there's also Humble Bundle for cheap games that support charities too, and Private Internet Access, which is a great and cheap VPN. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.